ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to VGU Plays Dark Souls 2 with Jeff the Mage. I'm Dom the Expert of Calls from VideoGamesUncovered.com and today we are going to be heading towards the last giant. Oh yeah. It's, it's only just hit me recently after doing these recording sessions. There are a lot of bosses in Dark Souls 2 that are pretty upsetting. There's a lot of sadness to be had in Dark Souls 2, and you know what? I think that just adds to the feel of it all. Because, I don't know, in Dark Souls 1 you had some really mystical bosses like Sif, which was absolutely amazing. But in this game so far, I've just had sad boss fight after sad boss fight, and I've almost felt like crying after most of these sad boss fights, because... But... Because you, you go into the boss fights and you just feel nothing because they're just boss fights. Then out of nowhere, what happens? Like you start reading the lore that you get off of their boss items. And it just, it just encapsulates everything that's sad about them. Pretty upsetting. But enough about sadness. Let's carry on. As you can see there, the turtle guys are no match for Jeff's mighty mage powers now. As I said at the end of the last episode, Jeff had a little bit of a friendship spree by just leaving his sign back of a bonfire and a lot of people summoning him, allowing him to gain a, a few more souls. I didn't go crazy. I didn't go, ha do insane amounts of grinding. Nah. I only did it a couple of times with Jeff and... Well, that's it. Just to get the attunement up a little bit more. Hence why our soul arrows, we now start with 62 instead of just 60. Which is great. Now over there, you're going to get some more amber. Amber leaves. And they are going to help you regenerate your magical essences. When the time comes, when you need to bring them all back. And up this sword is probably one of the best weapons you're going to get early on in the game if you're going to do a strength build. It's a halberd, and it's pretty amazing. I love the halberd. I think it is a fantastic weapon. I've seen people play with that weapon all the way through endgame, and I do not blame them whatsoever. You fully level it up, put an enchantment on it, it's great. But that wasn't great, because, well... Jeff's now dead. Death number 10. So of course after the death I had to obviously get back to where I was. Get back my souls. And regain my bloodstain. Which also allows me to kill these guys again. If I so wished it. Good thing is I picked up the halberd anyway. And I am going to store that halberd away. In case I'm just going to build strength at any point during the game. I heavily doubt I am. Because I am extremely focused on just being a mage and just using magic. So this can just be the big challenge for me. Now that was a little titanite lizard. You kill him and you get a couple of titanite shards, which is incredible. I would definitely recommend killing that guy if you can. He's not that hard to kill. I just hit him that once and uh, well, I guess his AI just went mental and he's like, no, I will kill myself first. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. So as you can see now, we've made a shortcut and we're back to where we were. And there's the gravestone of the merchant we killed in order to get that covetous silver serpent ring. You see now, you can go up to that gravestone, pay so many souls to bring the merchant back and, well, you'll be able to interact with that merchant again. And that's how it basically works with the majority of the NPCs in the game. So after beating up a few of those guys, just to get them out of my way, now we have to go into this room. Now be careful in this room because this guy is faking it. So of course you want to wake him up and you want to take him down as soon as you can. Simple as. Then you want to turn to your right and you want to just go down these stairs to pick up 
some more items and you get a large leather shield, which is actually alright for this stage. It is pretty nice. Here I am just checking whether I can equip it. No. Nope. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, again, I'm not really building towards being able to wear shields. I am heavily relying on dodging. And some of you guys might be thinking, but in some cases you might need to block. No, I'm still going to roll. <laughs> this is why this is going to be the most challenging build for me. Because I'm, I'm used to melee builds. I'm used to blocking instead of rolling. But of course, rolling is a challenge in itself. Especially in Dark Souls 2 when you have less invulnerability frames. So, let's see if we can't beat the boss now. Because now we have access to it. So what I'm going to do here is... I'm going to see if I can't summon a couple of phantoms just to join in on the fun. If, if I can summon them, great. If I can't summon them, uh, it's not the end of the world. Because the trick is now, because we killed mild-mannered Pate early on, and we got Pate's spear, and also that really nice ring that we got as well. Because that happened, effectively now, mild-mannered Pate is no longer a guy you can summon. Yeah, that's a thing. So I'm... I'm pretty much stuck doing this guy solo, which I don't mind. I don't mind doing bosses solo whatsoever. I just like that if there is a summon sign around the boss or on my way to fighting the boss, I'll pick it up just to see if I can and just to see if there's anyone who wants to join in. Okay, so before I fight against the boss here, I'm just going to drop my sign and I'm going to let someone summon me, pretty much. And I'm just going to take on the Lost Giant one last time before taking it on myself. Simple as that. I'll be right back. And here we are. Jeff has a couple of brand new friends to help him out in this situation. Now, I am going to set a rule for myself when it comes to summoning allies. I preferably just want to summon allies that are melee in order to mix things up so that I'm the range guy and he, these are the melee guys. I wasn't too lucky this time round, so we're just going to have fun with this guy. So this is the last giant, and this is just sad, because of course most of the trees in this area used to be giants, so now you have to fight the last one, or is he the last one? As you can see, it just, just look at him, it's like as if he's shackled, locked in place as to where he is, it's just intimidating. It's creepy, and if this is the first boss you're fighting in Dark Souls 2, he moves in this scene like nothing you faced in Dark Souls 1, which I think is great. It's really great. So now we actually face the Lost Giant our own, and there are a couple of strategies you can use here. If you hit him enough times or with enough damage in his legs, he'll be able to topple over, just like that. And then you'll be able to whack him in the head with a melee weapon if you so wish. However, what we're doing, as you can see, is just spamming our our soul arrows straight into the giant's face and straight straight into his torso. After a while, he will be ripping off his own arm, and when he rips off his own arm, he'll increase in damage and range. Here's a very easy boss to beat down, like, that, that was just an example of overkilling the boss, basically. But he's really easy, because with all of his attacks, you can basically just dodge them by rolling really close to him. And then, when you're really close to him, he'll do this stomp. So, when he does the stomp, he'll obviously lift his leg up. When he lifts his leg up, just roll backwards and get out of the way and rinse and repeat. He's a really easy boss fight. A very nice boss fight to have early on as well. I really enjoyed the Lost Giant boss fight. And we get the soldier key from it. And, of course, his boss soul, which is fantastic. Now, what's going to happen next is, I'm going to go to Medulla, level up a little bit, and we are going to move on to what happens next. But what will happen next? Tune in next time to VGU Plays Dark Souls 2 and find out. From me and from Jeff, we'll be seeing you on the other side.